I'm going to start screaming now. That's the only way to keep you awake. But listen, it's been a blessing to be here. Uh, thanks, get that out of the way. Uh, it, it's been a blessing to be here. Thank, uh, I, I want to thank the Alexander family. Amen. Brother John for letting us stay at his home and his, and his wife and his, and his children. What blessings they've been to us. And uh, We're very grateful that, that they invited us. You know, Brother, Brother John, he, he texted me on Facebook and he said, Hey, you want to stay at our place when you come? And that was a blessing. I'm really grateful for that. Facebook blessing. Yeah, Facebook blessing. Big, big Facebook. Brother Facebook. Big Brother Facebook. That's right. But, uh, <laughs> It's amazing, but that's how I really met everybody here, uh, besides Brother Russ. But everybody here, I pretty much uh, met along the way that I know anyway on Facebook. And, and uh, you know, you can't, there's some people that just waste time on that, don't do anything productive. But, but uh, just last week, so you know, we were talking about the incorporation issue. Just last week, a church contacted us uh, about, about getting unincorporated. Amen. I mean, one, but, but uh, not even a week ago. So, uh, you know, there's people are waking up to that issue. They're starting to wake up. And, uh, you know, all you need is a little bit of uh, a little bit of persecution and oppression, and people start to wake up. Unfortunately, that's how it goes in church history if you study it. That's exactly the way it goes. Uh, people won't wake up until there's a little bit of persecution. Persecution brings the fire. You know, the fire brings on uh, some reproving and some refining. And, uh, and, you know, all the phonies start to go away when the fire comes. Uh, I think somebody said uh, Brother George likes to use that fake. That, that's your favorite phrase there. A fake and a fraud. Well, they, those those people, when that time comes, and it's coming in America, folks. Uh, when that time comes, you're going to see a lot of folks that aren't real for the Lord. They're gonna, they're not going to want to be in churches, and that's why I can't figure out all these 501c3 churches. Just their big box church that they have. You know, nobody's going to show up to that when they're when they're when they're persecuted. They ain't going to show up. They're they're going to leave. I'm going to tell you what, half those stockholders are going to leave there. They're going to be gone. Uh, when they're in, I know you don't like that probably, but they're, they're investors or whatever. They're, they're a part of the corporation. Uh, those people are going to take off. They're not going to stick around. Uh, they're not going to be persecuted because it it's not that important. Those pastors, uh, they're not going to stick around either. When they're, when they're facing, they're either going to compromise more and do whatever they're told to do, or they're, just, or they're going to leave. They're not going to, they're not going to care for the flock. Mm -hmm. You know, and what we have today... In America, we have a bunch of dumb dogs that don't bark. Amen. That's exactly what we have. Just, yeah, yeah, dumb dogs that won't bark. Amen. They will not warn. They will not bark. They will not stand up for what's right. And uh, I get contacted every week on Facebook from people that are saying, man, is there a church in our area? Is there something around here? I mean, go to church and nobody preaches the Bible anymore. It's all a bunch of games. Uh, no, nothing, no, nothing there. Well, what can we do? These people are staying home because there ain't nowhere to go. And people say, well, go to that compromising church. Well, would you? I wouldn't. Nope. Hey, Amen. I wouldn't yeah. go there. Right. You know, I wouldn't go to a church that won't preach the Bible. <laughs> Amen. Don't allow wickedness. I don't, people need to stop supporting these churches. Right. You pull your money away and stop su and start supporting people who want to do right. It's Amen. ridiculous. Anyway, Amen, bro. I don't know how I got off on that, but I did. It's one of those rabbits. Shoot the rabbit, get back on the, on the road here. Uh, turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 26. And Acts chapter 26, we're going to talk about repentance and uh, repentance and evangelism. And uh, I don't know, uh, the Lord must have led Brother Rick is to, to have me to speak on this because him and I talk about repentance all the time, constantly with people on, on Facebook. We are always communicating about repentance. You'd be surprised the arguments that him and I run into on repentance. Uh, you, you would think that, that how could there be an argument about something so absolutely simple in the scriptures? But men don't want to repent. That's why there's an argument about it. Uh, they, yeah, if, if you believe in repentance, you've got to repent. And, uh, you know, if you don't believe in repentance, you don't have to worry about repentance. You know, you don't have to worry about repenting. So it makes it easy. Life's easy when you don't have to repent. Uh, and, and, you know what, the gospel's easy if you don't repent. And everything Everything's just simple and easy and, and everything else if you don't have to repent. Let's pray, man. I'm going to get going here. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you that we can be here, Lord. What a blessing this meeting has been. Lord, I thank you for these men that have shared, that have more experience than I do with, with preaching on the streets and evangelism, Lord. And I'm so grateful for each and every one of them that came. And, and their, their, their testimonies, Lord, and the truth that they've, that they've stood up for you, Lord, they've they, that they're standing up and they're preaching the word of God in the open air and they're doing it for your honor and glory. Lord, there's no glory in it for us. We don't, we don't need any glory, Lord. It all belongs to you. We just want to be servants for you. We want to be obedient. 
there's no there's no glamour in it for us, Lord. We we need to follow you. We need to be obedient. We need to shuck off all of our pride and everything else, Lord, and just be humble servants of the Most High God. Amen. Lift up our voices. Preach the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Help us, Lord, to understand this topic of repentance tonight, this doctrine of repentance, this, this vitally important doctrine that's being, that's being flushed down the toilet of fundamentalism today. Yes. Lord, it's being ignored. It's being wiped away. Yes. Lord, I pray you'd help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Uh, I like this portion of scripture. Uh, Acts chapter 26, verse number 13. We're going to start there. And I'm going to read you. The the title of this message is A Call to Repentance. Are you obeying the heavenly vision? Are you obeying the heavenly vision? At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Yes, amen. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Now pay attention. You know, you got to pay attention. I have appeared to thee for this purpose. What purpose is that? Mm -hmm. Mm. Amazing, isn't it? To make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in 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 the which I will appear unto thee. Delivering thee from the people and, and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. Now pay attention to every word, it matters. It's important because we're going to dissect the argument today, part of the argument that is made by many, many, what I would call hyper-dispensationalists. They make this argument in air because they don't read the scripture or from the apostle that they pulled up. Mm-hmm. They, they ignore his words. Now why are you ignoring your apostle's words? Yeah. Think about it. And a witness both of these things, he says here, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people, from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes, uh uh-oh, here it is, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. Amen. Right, right. You know what? That's pretty simple, isn't it? Well, you know, even if we don't understand that part, he's going to explain it even better here in a minute. I mean, he's going to explain it even better for you. He's going to make it so simple that you couldn't possibly misunderstand this. Amen. Amen. Unless you want to or you're doing it on purpose. Right, right, right. right. If you're willfully doing it. To, from darkness to light and from the power of Satan yes. unto God. And I don't know about you, but that's how I got saved. Mm-hmm. I was under the clutches of Satan. Yes. Right. And I got turned. Yes. Amen. Amen. I was converted. Yes. I was born again. I repented. Amen. Amen. Unto God. Right. Mm-hmm. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. Right. Yes. It wasn't that they may receive belief. <laughs> right. I, well, sin was a problem? Yeah. Well, you would know from the average preaching today that sin's a problem. Right. You would think that all sin's a problem today. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just belief. That's what the real problem is. No. <laughs> forgiveness of sins. Mm-hmm. And an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Yes. Oh, boy. There it is. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Oh, it's a complete yeah. message, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay. He didn't leave anything out. Yeah. This is the commission of the Apostle Paul. That's right. This is Jesus Christ coming to him and appearing to him and giving him his mission. That's right. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. being very plain and simple here. He is telling him, This is what I called you to. Right. You miss it. Yes. Right. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Mm-hmm. Are you disobedient unto the heavenly vision? How many preachers are disobedient unto the heavenly vision today? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles. Boy, notice he didn't, he didn't leave anything out. Paul didn't leave anything out. Or, excuse me, God didn't leave anything out. 
of what Paul's mission was. That's right. Mm-hmm. And then to the Gentiles, that they should repent. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Amen. That's right. More help. Amen. Whoa. That's right. Was it believe? No. no, it was repent. Amen. That's right. And turn to God. Right. I mean, you get the picture? He's explained Amen. it more than once here. I mean, he's, I mean, it's like a third or fourth reference to this. Turn them from light to darkness. Or from darkness to light, excuse me, from the power of darkness to light. He's turning them from the power of Satan into God. So he's given reference after reference. Right. This is your mission, Paul. This is what I've called you to do. Amen. Right. Amen. This is the pattern that you and I are supposed to follow. Yes, Amen. sir. Oh, that's right. Right. That they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Right. Amen. You know, <laughs> that sounds an awful lot like... Nice works, brother. Yeah, that sounds an awful lot like God expected that when folks got saved, something was going to change. Right. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. And, and, you know, it, it really sounds like he expected that. Like, this, Paul, this is your mission. Yes. Uh-huh. This is what I've sent you for, hey. Paul. Right. This is what you're going to do. Yes, and this sir. is what you're going to see. Happen, Paul. Yes. Right. The Apostle Paul was given this vision from the Lord. The Lord appears unto him and he tells him, This is it, Paul. This is what you're going to do for me. Could you imagine being the Apostle Paul? Yeah. You're on the road to Damascus. I mean, you're murdering people. Yeah. Right. 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 You're arresting them. You're having, you're handing them over to be murdered. You're just wreaking havoc in the churches. I mean, that's what you're doing. And man, you got on that road to Damascus and you had a light, bright light come. Jesus Christ came. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, a head-on collision course with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That's how everybody gets saved, by the way. Amen. Right. Right. I don't know if you think you got saved some other way, but you don't. You get saved because you have a head-on collision course with the Holy Ghost. If right. you didn't have it, something's wrong, friend. Right. Something's wrong. Amen. Something's dead, dead wrong. I mean that, literally. <laughs> Hmm. Now, repentance in evangelism is nothing more than, than obedience to the commands of Christ. Right. It's nothing more than... I don't have a fancy outline for you. I'm going to go through some things here, but I'm not a fancy guy anyway. I'm not Brother Rickus. I can't get up here and give you a uh, wonderful outline. And I always say he's a smart one, man. I'll tell you what, when I get in trouble, I just, I just, I just tag Brother Rickus and let him clean it all up. I clean it all the time, too. I was like, okay, hey, I'll tell you, Brother Rickus, you need to help me right now. I'm telling you. Tired of these people. The brother just comes in the book and they all fall asleep. (laughs) (laughs) Bam! Okay, I'm I'm unfriended him now. He's done. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, what is it about that? They hate me after he writes something. And I can't figure that out. And they still like him. (laughs) It's me. It's got to be my fault. Anyway. But uh, first of all, though, as we look at this text, I want to show you something that I believe is very simple here that that the Lord's already revealed to us. The the argument that repentance is not for the church today or not for this age or for this time, whatever you want to call it, that's the argument that's made today by many hyper-dispensationalists. What they will say is, is that, well, repentance isn't for today. Well, I mean, okay, I know you guys chop it all the way up down the line into Acts, and you get real far into Acts, and, you know, you get to different churches and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into that tonight, but, but the point is this. That's Acts chapter 26. That's right. Right. All right, friend? Much so I don't care how far you chopped it or how far down the block you went. You ain't cutting it any closer than that. That's Acts chapter 26, and he is explaining, this is what God sent me to do. This is what I'm doing now, King right. Agrippa. Right. That's why I'm standing before you, because I did this. Yeah, right. You ain't getting rid of repentance. Uh, uh, you can't get rid of repentance here. This is the Apostle Paul. He's saying, listen, God called me to, to preach repentance That's today. right. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. It hasn't changed, folks. Right. John the Baptist... Uh, well, we can go all the way back to Genesis. And we can go all the way back to we go, you, you ain't never going to get rid of repentance. Right. And whatever dispensation, wherever you follow, you are not going to get rid of repentance. It is there. Amen. And it is necessary. Amen. It's so necessary that in the commission it was given like three or four times here. Four times here he keeps explaining it over Amen. and over again. Amen. you got to repent. Yeah. Call them to repentance. Yeah. Preach right. repentance to them. Right. Notice that the message never changes, though, with the Apostle Paul, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. How do you open their eyes? Uh-huh. Just like Brother Dan said yesterday, yeah. you preach the law to them. Amen. 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 Right. 
What happened to you the first time you found out you were actually a sinner? I mean, when it hit home. Right. That you really understood. What happened to you? You went, whoa. Amen. Your eyes were open. Whoa, that's me. Amen. Right, right. That's me he's talking to. He's not talking to the guy next to me. He's talking to me. Right. God's dealing with me. Yeah. I'm the problem. It's my sin. Yes. That's right. Amen. So minimized today. Right. Yeah. Now the personalization of the gospel is not there today in most most del in deliveries of the gospel mm -hmm. today in, in what I would call largely this might upset a few people but the cult of soul winning yeah, right. mm -hmm. uh, it's not there that's it's right. that personalization of sin is not there that's right brother. and that's why when they hear a street preacher get up and they start preaching repentance right. yeah I mean they're just like what yeah because right. yeah, see we're not going to tell them they stole a cupcake when they're three okay yeah. We're going to tell the truth. Right. Fornication, yeah. adultery, yeah. wickedness, right. Right. lying, yeah. thieving, hating, murderous, whoremongering. Yeah. That's right. Amen, Amen. Amen brother. That's everything the Apostle Paul did. That's, right. <laughs> That's everything the preachers of the Word of God have always done. Right. Right. They brought those things out. Why? To call those men to repentance. Yes. Right. you got to right. repent from Amen. something, That's folks. Right. Amen. Right. It doesn't make any sense to say, well, I just heard that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something, Fred. You can hand that, you can hand the gospel, the beautiful gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you what most people are going to do with it when you don't preach the law, schoolmaster, bring them to Christ. No. They're going to trample on your Savior. They're That's going to make right. fun of yes. him and mock him. Yes. They're going to laugh at him. That's uh -huh. what they're going to do. And they do it all the time. Right. Yes. They mock him and they vainly say prayers and they right. vainly yep. do that. Why? Because it means nothing to them. Right. Boy, I'm going to tell you something, friend. When you get hit between the eyes and the heart with that law of God, and it's a schoolmaster, sit down, you're in school, son. That's what God says to you. You are in school. And when you get hit with it, and you get that conviction of that Holy Ghost. That's right. Amen. Oh. No, you know you've been taught something. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. You know you have been. The Apostle Paul is very clear. He started, he says that it was in Damascus, then Jerusalem, yeah. then Judea. Yeah. And then, you know what, Not to, so my dispensational, uh, hyper-dispensational friends don't think they can get out of it. He says, ah, I went to the Gent, then you're going to go to the Gentiles. That's yeah. right. Everybody. That's right. Mm -hmm. And all men everywhere to repent. That's right. God has commanded yeah. all men everywhere to repent. That's right. Amen. That's what it says. Amen. Amen. Everywhere. Yes. All men. That's you. That's what yes, I said. That's yes, me. That's right. That doesn't leave anybody out. I'm sorry. Right. If you ain't a man, then, then if you ain't a man or from mankind or a human being, then I guess you don't have to repent. Yes. All right. But if you're a man, if you're if you're of man, if you're of a woman, then you've got to repent. Right. Amen. 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 You've been called to it. Right. You've been given the order from God to repent. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yes, it's right. not an option, friend. Right. Nope. To even question that is amazing to me, to people. Same but here. I've heard many hyper dispensationalists say it. Yeah. In fact, I had a, a friend, of, I'm not going to mention names, but a friend of this ministry right here. He unfriended me because he's a hyper dispensationalist. Wow. And I was too hard on repentance for him. Sure. So he didn't want to be my friend anymore. Yeah. Oh. He didn't want to be my friend anymore. <laughs> <laughs> To be I, 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 it's, it is one funny thing about Facebook. If somebody looks at you, I'm going to unfriend you. Yeah. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anything, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, the only worst thing you can do is tell my mom or something. I mean, the worst thing you can do is tell my mother or something. I mean, it's like, tell your mom on you. That's what, that's, that's what that's like, by the way. But anyway, that's. Car <laughs> now. That's what happens. I don't know. I, You know. Oh, and I had some. I had the same man make the argument. No, that was for that was for Israel. Bible days. That was for Israel. That repentance was for Israel. Well, no, your apostle Paul, that, that you right. claim to follow his teachings, Amen. and you believe what he says. Mm -hmm. He just told you what. Yeah, all right. Amen. To the Gentiles. Amen. To every man that they need to repent. Amen. Amen. Very simple. So that destroys that hyper dispensational argument of it's not there. No, it, repentance is in every every time, every dispensation, covenant, whatever you want to say, repentance was always present. God never left it out. Yeah. I mean how can you be forgiven? <laughs> I, it always amazed me that you're never sorry for anything you've ever done. You, you see a man, you know what, anybody, I, I can, I'm going to say this again to you probably during this message, but I can get any kid, I can get any kid to say a sinner's prayer. I can get, I get almost any man to say one. I was a great salesman. I used to be a salesman. I can get anybody to do it. 
I'm going to tell you some stories here in a little while. And, and, uh, they're real life stories. They're not, you know, illustrations from a book or something. Right? But uh, they're real life stories from, uh, of, of what I was guilty of. Yes. Right. What I had to repent of. Yes. Right. That's right. That's right. To repent of a repentanceless gospel. Amen. Right. You understand? Amen. So I know. I, I'm not. I'm not up here just trying to feed you some story or get on some high horse. I'm telling you, I, I believe I, I. I helped make hundreds of people twofold ch children of hell. Amen, brother. You right. understand Amen. that? So I have that guilt on me. Right. It would have put me in right. hell too. Amen. Amen. That's right. I have that guilt on me. So I, I'm not standing up here guiltless and saying I was never a part of this. No, I'm telling you, I was the deep into this. Right. Right. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big part of it. The Apostle Paul made it very clear there. Repentance was the message that the Apostle Paul preached. Well, what is repentance? I mean, a simple, simple definition, and we may not all agree exactly on what that is, but, but suffice it to say that it is not merely a change of mind. Mm -hmm. Which is being told, oh, it's just a change of mind. Well, I always got a kick out of somebody changing the, uh, when their repentance was limited to a change of mind. Right, right, right. And here's why. Well, because if your mind changes but your action doesn't change, then how did your mind change? It did. Right. It did. You that doesn't right. make any sense. Right. Right. I mean, if, if God told Jonah, Jonah, I'm going to destroy Nineveh if they don't repent. Amen. Mm -hmm. But if they repent, I won't destroy them. Yeah. So what did Nineveh do? They repented. So what did God do? He changed his mind. He said, fine, they did right. I'm going to do right. Yeah, I, I, yeah. shall, the, shall the judge of all the earth do right? Yep, I'll do right. Right, amen. Now right. what if God said, well, I was just kidding. I'm going to kill you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, that ain't very good repentance. No, sir, brother. I don't want that kind of repentance. No, sir. Neither does God. Amen. Right. Amen. amen. That's Who do you think you're fooling right. with that? Yeah. Right. right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Who do you think you're fooling with That's that? Good, you're not fooling anybody with that. That's right. Amen. Change your mind that goes nowhere. Right. Amen. Amen, bro. Amen. That's just ridiculous. Right. That is even. And then the fact that there's absolutely no sorrow at all involved with that. Really? Did you have that head on collision course with the Holy Ghost? Amen. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you. Amen. You had to peel me off the floor. Yes. Mm -hmm. God dealt with me. Amen. I lived 25 years of my life. Yes. Lost yes. and dying in my sins. Amen. Well, I love my sins and I love the flesh and I love to live in it. That I'm saved. Yeah, yeah, I did. I made a confession when I was four years old, man. Didn't remember it. Wasn't clear to me. My mom and dad kept telling me I was saved. Right. Boy, man, right. Between, between the pounds of pot that I smoked and the dope and the drinking and the running around, the carousing, you know, I just. And there wasn't a Holy Ghost anywhere near any of that. Right. Amen, brother. Right. That's, That's right. Lost. That's right. I got saved. I never repented or been born again. That's right. Ridiculous. Absolutely no witness of God inside of me. Right. None of it. Thank you. It, w it wasn't there, friend, because I wasn't saved. Right. But he said, he said that, that God said that he would deliver us from the power of Satan and the God. Yes. Right. That they might receive forgiveness of sins. Yes. Right. Well, I don't know about you, but... You know, you don't get forgiven with God from God unless you're sorry for what you've done. Amen. You understand what you've done. Amen. You don't think sorrow is involved with repentance? You don't think a change of mind that leads to a change of action? Amen. That there's some action there with that? Really? What did you get saved from then? Amen. Right. Uh -huh. What in the world did you get saved from then? Because I know what I was. Yes. Amen. I know what I was. I know I was a fornicator, a druggie, and everything else. What did you get saved from then? Amen. Right. Apparently nothing. Yeah. Right, you get saved. That's right. That's right. Period. There's not. I mean, the, you have a radical change that takes place. That's right. That's right, brother. I believe it's a change of mind in some sense. Sure, a change of heart. Yeah, amen. That's it. That leads to a radical change of action. Amen. No? Well, let me tell you something, friend. Apostle Paul was on the road to Damascus, ready to kill some more people. Yeah, that's right. Ready to kill him, sir. Ready to go kill him. That's right. Now let me tell you something, friend. When, you, when you're the guy that's coming to kill everybody, yeah. then you have that head-on collision course with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And that light shines on you, and you yep. fall, you're melted like butter. Just think about it. You ain't gonna keep going. And then guess what happened to him? <laughs> he was humble. Yes. Now the same people that he was murdering, he yeah. started hugging. Yeah. 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 Kissing them, yeah. loving them. That's right. Protecting them. That's right. Preaching right. to them. Yeah. Yeah. Was, was, was helping them build churches. Yeah. Ministering unto them, giving his life for them. Hey. Right. 
That's right. That's right. What happened to him? Yeah. Amen. He repented. Right. Amen. Amen. He, he repented. Amen. He didn't, well, if he didn't repent, he would have been still been killing. If he preached the same repentance that, that some of these guys are preaching today, then he'd still be killing people. Exactly. Just believe right. that he did it. Just believe that he did it. Yeah. If all he did was believe, he didn't have to Paul already knew there was a God in heaven. Yeah. Paul already said that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he was persecuting Jesus Christ. That's true. That's right. That's right. right. He was persecuting. Amen. So the same church right. he was persecuting ended up loving and caring for him, giving his life for him. That's right. Why? Because he repented. No, he just believed. My friend, if his belief didn't work out any repentance, then he didn't believe. That's right. Why is that so hard to understand? Right. Uh, I, I've asked I've asked these folks a question. And I'm going to get to the evangelism part, but I got to lay a foundation here first. Amen. Which time do I have? I have plenty of time. Do you quit? Plenty of time. Amen. All right. Listen. This. Uh, I asked. I asked these people that don't don't preach repentance. Can you show me one person that got saved that didn't repent in the Bible? Amen. Would you just show me one person that didn't have a that had a change of mind, a radical change of mind, or a radical change of heart that didn't lead to a radical change of action? Amen. Can you show me one one person? No, they can't, and they never do. That's right. They right. never show you why, because it didn't happen. Right. Nobody's saying, nobody's preaching sinless perfection. Right. right. That's right. Nobody's preaching that. We all know what we are. Right. That's right. Amen. But I also know one thing: I'm not heading that way anymore. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Amen. I ain't heading towards hell anymore. Right. Right. What I got saved from. These, these so-called Christians that are that, that, that don't believe repentance are running too. Yes, yes that's yeah. right. Don't yeah. make sense to me. Amen. Amen. I mm -hmm. was delivered from all that. Yes. Amen. I ain't going back to that. Right. Yeah. By the grace of God, but I'm not going back to it. Right. right. I've already repented of that. Yeah. Amen. I'm not going back to that again. Yes, sir. You have to you have to wonder how real their God is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to really wonder how real He is to them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. He said that they might receive forgiveness of sins. But I, again, I thought it was a belief problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Paul didn't say that they may receive forgiveness for their unbelief. By the way, unbelief <laughs> is a sin. Sure. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So I asked a guy one time about 35 times on a, on a thread. I literally, 35. Yeah, I was being kind of jerk, but I kept going with it. Because he wouldn't answer the question. But I kept, Brother Ricks is on that thread too. But I kept asking that question. It wasn't him. He could answer it. But, the, but I kept asking the question Is idolatry sin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is idolatry sin? I asked that guy like 30 times. And he, Amen. Do you know he would not answer my question? Why? Because you are. Because he knows that if you go to the book, it says that you turn uh -huh. from idols. Amen. Amen. To serve the living God. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Amen. The living God. You turn from. Wait a minute. If that, if I, if serving idols was a sin, then that means he had to turn from that sin to be saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it works. You All don't say at sin. the same time. Repentance and faith together. That's right. right. Together. Amen. Together. Yeah. together. That's right. No, and, and the the argument that's ridiculous out there today is well, that well, repentance is real, or if repentance is necessary, then anybody can repent. They can repent of anything. Yeah, but that's why it says repentance toward God and faith toward and faith. Right. Amen. It's repentance toward God. Read yes. the Bible, friend. It's right there. It's Amen. very simple. Amen. <laughs> it's not hard. I'm telling you, I can figure it out. It's not hard. Amen. Very simple. Amen. He said, You became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were ensembles to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place, your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And how ye turn to God from idols. Yes. yes. Amen. Serve the living and true God. Amen. 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 I think sin had something to do with that. They were turning from something. Mm -hmm. Right. Idols. Yes. Yes. If idol worship is sin, then they clearly turn. That's right. 
Now, if it's not, then you have to come to me and tell me that idol worship is not sin. Mm-hmm. Anybody want to say that? Yeah. No, I couldn't get that guy to say it. Yeah. yeah. He wouldn't say it. Mm-hmm. Repentance includes godly sorrow or sorrow toward God. Now rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repent. For you were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh Amen. repentance Amen. to salvation, yes. not to be repented of. Amen. But the sorrow of the world work at death. Yeah, you're right. You can repent unto the world and have sorrow unto the world. You sure can. Sure. Sure. Judas did it. Yep. He hung, hung himself. That's right. What did that? It worked death. That's right. It was, right. a, it was an Esau in the Old Testament did it too as well. He sorrowed yes. unto himself. He repented right. unto himself. Yeah. Never to God. That's right. That's good. Never to God. We're not, we're not saying, oh, you just have to repent. Right. Right. Let's repent toward, toward God Amen. and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. You can sorrow unto yourself. Be in good, though. I've met a lot of people that sit and cry all the time. They're doing good. Yep. Well, I mean, right. 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 And nobody's guilty in jail. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Walk up and down in jail, so they don't believe repentance either. Mm. Walk up and down a jail cell. You start talking to everybody. Everybody's innocent. Yeah. Everybody's sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you walk up and down. No, I never done nothing wrong. No, I didn't do it. 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 Jail cell full of people. Now, I believe there's some people that get a raw deal. I'm not saying that. But I'll tell you what. When a guy gets caught with his murdering and his dope and everything else that he's done, the wickedness that he's done and dangerous, wicked stuff that he's done, I mean, man, they got you. I, I've literally had somebody... That I knew that they're they were watching a videotape. They tried to tell the guy why didn't steal that ice cream. They worked for an ice cream shop and they were double dipping in the ice cream. Now this guy kept saying, "Could you imagine that eating at that restaurant?" And they fired him for it. We said, "I didn't do it." They go, they hit play. Hey, me. That wasn't, that wasn't me. That's what he said. I didn't do it. Did you understand? This man could not. He would not repent. He could not admit that he what he had done. He could not do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of like a lot of the preachers we have today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just can't admit that repentance thing. Nope. Right. They just can't handle that. Yeah. You know why? Because it would invalidate a whole lot of things that they've been doing. Right. Amen. It would be a revealer of a whole lot of things. Right. And they'd have to humble themselves and stand before their congregations and say, I was wrong. Yeah. Right. But you want to know something? There's something liberating about being wrong. Right. Amen, Amen bro. Amen. I've had to do it a few different times. That's right. You can uh-huh. be right. You can confess that. You can admit. You know, I was sitting in front of our church and told me, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I did it wrong. I shouldn't have done that. Messed up. What's wrong with that? You know what they do? That's okay, preacher. We love you. We understand. You're just like any other man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little bit better with God. You're just human. It's a fail. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Exactly. Just kidding. Yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, I'm very good going. Uh, amen. Repentance in Scripture, we see that we understand that it's that radical change. It takes place. It's real. It's Holy Ghost rot. It's a gift of God. I believe that. I'm not a hyper Calvinist. I don't have to be believe what the Bible says. Amen, bro. Plain and simple. It's a work of the Holy Ghost. Right. I I I learned something. Uh, off, off a video, Brother Dan uh, had had he preached on the faith of Christ. Amen. Amen. And I love that. That was a blessing. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh. And brother, I taught that. And everybody thought I found that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell. I didn't tell a soul you found it. God, God revealed that unto you. Yeah. Great. Right. Love watching these videos over here. Everybody thinks I'm so smart, man. I'm telling you. No, 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 I, get it from, I got it from Brother Higgins and Brother. They got it from the King James Bible. It's good. They ain't theirs. They can't keep it. So. <laughs> Amen. Use it. Facebook tonight. Hey, 
No, I ain't afraid to admit I don't have all the answers. Yeah. Right. Learn from people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to learn. That's why I'm here today. Yeah. 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 I'm blessed by it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you'll stay humble, you'll learn something. You'll yeah. let people teach you. Amen. God will use you. Yeah. Amen. 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 He'll use Amen. you. Amen. Amen. I want to I want to talk to you about uh, repentance and soul winning just for a second here, just for a few minutes here. I want to tell you some stories that. Um, they break my heart now that I think about them, but I just want to tell you the truth about them, what, what really happened. When I started out, I, I, I was saved in a church in Iowa, and I know I've repented. I know that the Lord has done a work in my heart. I know that I I, uh, I was saved, but, you know, they had, a, they had the Hiles method of doing things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but, but it, it's probably in about, I'd say about 85% of... Uh, any church that calls themselves an independent fundamental Baptist today, I would say that they're, they're you know, probably about 85 percent of them use these methods today. Uh, vast reach and everything else. Now I believe the methods are, are strictly from the pit of hell. Uh, now that I understand them and I, I, and I and I follow the scriptures and see what the, what the Lord said about evangelism and and how it's done, but I remember I, I want to give you a story. I remember that they have a missions conference at this church that I was a part of that I got saved in, and they had these missionaries come in. These prospective missionaries come in, and uh, this pastor said, "Well, if you can't go soul winning here, then you can't do it out there. So everybody's got to go soul winning." So, okay, whatever. So we all go out, and here's how they do things. Obviously, they do the one, two, three, pray after me. You, you pretty much know all that goes. If you don't know what that is, just watch Stephen Anderson's video, and you'll figure it out. Yeah. That's that's exactly what it is. It's it's no work of the Holy Ghost. He's nowhere to be found in that. And I'm not saying somebody can't get saved like that, okay? God will save who He wants to save, and He'll convict who He wants to convict. I, I'm not saying that. That doesn't mean, listen, people get saved in jail, but I don't want to go there. Yeah. You understand that? Does that make sense? Yeah, God, yeah God's Word won't return for it, but I don't want to do things wrong just because there's some results. We're not looking for little pragmatic results. And things. We're looking for obedience. So anyway, so we all go out. And we all get in a van, a church van, and we go out. And this was a contest. Right, uh, right. I want you to listen to how wicked this right. is. Yeah. And I want you to hate this and loathe this and tell everybody you know how bad this is. Because yes. it's wicked. It's the pits of hell. Hey, man. They wicked. Have a contest. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. You have a contest to see how many souls that you can lead to Christ. And what they're really saying is how many you can lead through a prayer. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's what they mean by that. That's right. But uh, they think they're getting saved. They think everybody that says that prayer is saved automatically. Yeah. That's, this is what they believe. This is what they teach. That's right. Come on. Completely. Everybody that says the prayer, everybody. No, there's not no false. You talk to these people, they don't believe in false conversions. Or false, they, they, don't, they don't believe in false professions. And the Bible clearly does. 90% of these people don't believe in that. Well, anyway, so they, so we're, we're going out, we're knocking on these doors, and and uh, we, we're told to get, I mean, you just gather everybody you can in the house. You get them all together. Which, you know, it's fine concept if you're really going to preach. Yeah. But, I mean, let's gather them all together. So you get them all together. You grab them all, and you get them all together. You just start you just start preaching through them and say, well, little Johnny, you don't want to burn in hell, do you? Yeah. Oh, man, what kid's going to tell you he wants to burn in hell? He's already scared half to death. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I came in and told me I'm going to go to hell. I'll say whatever you want me to say. Just get me out of this thing. Right. That's what most adults say to you, too. I'll say whatever you want to. Just get me out of this thing. Free me from my punishment. Not that I deserve it, but that dirty God up in heaven is a bully. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Listen, that's, it. that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. Your God is a dirty bully. Yeah. And Jesus came to save you from that dirty father up in heaven that expects too much out of you. Yep. Right. Because you're not that bad of a person. Oh, you might have told a little white line. Just a little one. Man, I'm telling you, we're as rotten as the devil. Amen. Come on, amen. As rotten as the devil. That's right, brother. Amen. They know about right. a little white lie. That's right. You know what they're saying is a little white lie. Right. Right. That got Christ whipped and beat, yes. right, right, and crucified. Yeah. What nothing little about it. That's right, right, man. It shed His innocent blood. Yeah. Nothing little about it. Grievously yeah. wicked. That's right. Yeah. So, we get up there and we start running people through prayer. So, man, me and this missionary, this, this, now this is a mission. And I understand, I'm, I'm 20, 25, maybe 23. I, I can't remember. 25, I think I'm about 25 years old. And this is, this is, this is, uh, you know, this man is like 60. So he should know better. I'm new. I mean, I'm just saved. You know, I'm just, I'm just thinking I'm doing what's right, right? Yeah, that's right. 
going out soloing. Man, I, man, I used to be smoking. I mean, three months ago, I was smoking dope, getting drunk, and running around fornicating, man. I, I'm doing the works of God now. This is great. I mean, come on. This is good stuff. You can feel good about this. Right. You know? I didn't know what I was doing. Right. So I'm going through there, and I'm, I'm just running the whole house through prayers. And all these people just running through prayers. Writing their names down, just I mean, man, these yeah. people, these yeah. people don't know what they're. They, they don't have any clue nope. yep. that they're wicked sinners deserving hell. They just want you off your front porch most of the yeah. time. They don't. Right. That's right, bro. That's right. Come on, my dinner's That's in the right. oven. Leave me alone. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I, I don't want to. So we're just gathering names up. I mean, mm-hmm. man, so we're having a contest. And I got like, man, I got like 28 people. And this missionary, he we go into this house. We go into this house and. He starts talking to this lady. I think it was an older lady. And he starts telling her, you know, would you like to pray? And you know, you're a sinner and you need Jesus. And would you like to pray? I mean, it's really it's like five minutes. It doesn't last very long. This lady goes, No, I don't want to pray. <laughs> he goes, Now you sure? I mean, I want you to go to heaven. Friend, it don't matter if you want her to go to heaven. That's right. right. I'm glad you want her to go to heaven. I, the Apostle Paul would give his life for people to go to heaven if he could have. Right. But it didn't change anything. He couldn't. Right. No. Amen. Give his own life. So, I mean, if he can't do it, then, then, then you can't either. Right. Right. Jesus gave his life. Amen. For your sin. Amen. Amen. By the way, you don't have a heaven problem. You have a sin problem. Amen. Amen. Get off that garbage. That's that's wrong. You don't have a Jesus didn't come for you to go to heaven. Jesus came because you're a sinner. Right. He came to save his people from their sins. That's, right. that's why he came. Because you're a sinner. He didn't come because you got a heaven problem. Amen. All right? He didn't come for that. He came because you're a wicked sinner, and I'm a wicked sinner, and we deserve to go to hell, and God's mercy brought it. Amen. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Heaven problem. Good. Heaven problem. Sin problem. Uh-huh. You're not fit for heaven. I'm not right. 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 Until Jesus Amen. makes sure. it. Amen. Right. 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 His righteousness. Amen. Anyway, so so this man, he, he takes this, this lady says, I'll call her Creed. I don't remember what her name was, but it was something I don't remember. Agnes or something, I don't know. But this lady says, no, I don't want to do it. Come on, you want to go to heaven. Come on, lady, I need another number here. Right, I mean, that's right. what he's saying. That's yes. really what he's saying. <coughs> but she said, no, so get, this, get this trick that he does. He takes his Bible and he just starts praying. He says, well, dear Jesus, we're here today. Uh, we're here with Frida. We want Frida to be saved. And, uh, Frida, would you just grab the Bible and repeat it? Mm. Yeah. Like, uh, and finally, Frida's just like, I just put these annoying people out of my house. <laughs> I'll say whatever you want to. You'll go on your way. Nothing will change for me. Right. Nothing. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. Frida was, was yeah. manipulated into a prayer. Uh-huh. Frida prayed the prayer. Probably will never get saved. Probably died and went to hell. She's probably dead now. Mm-hmm. That's right. And she was given, and that missionary is getting paid to run around the country and run around the Indian reservations. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, send all the hell. What are you doing? Well, we left there and I said, you think that person really got saved? I mean, I, I asked that my that question. I'm like, There's no way that person got saved. Then we get back to the church house. We're all coming back. We get back there and, and then the, the, pre, the pastor had to have the... You had to turn in your That's right. papers, yes. your, yeah. your, uh, your results. Yeah. 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 Productive today, my son. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Productive. Have you been productive, my son? Yeah. Yeah. What have you done so we can put this on file that you've done something? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. hey, I'm just being real. I, yeah. I know what it is. Know. They've right. got to validate their now. ministry, so right. they have to have right. these reports. Somebody asked me, well, and I, I'm not putting anybody out if you guys do this here, but, but they asked me, you know, do you have visitors? Do you write their cards? I don't do that. Okay, I don't do that. Right. And I don't do that for a few reasons. The first reason is because if you love Jesus Christ enough, you'll be back. Okay, that's good. If you don't, then you won't. Right. Amen. And it's not for you anyway. The messages that I preach are for this body. That's, that's what they're right. for. That's right. Right. I didn't know you were coming. God did. But I didn't. So I'm preaching what God wants me to preach. Yeah, that's good. Amen. 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 For you. Amen. Amen. And I'm not going to chase some goats around to try right. to see if they'll come. Right. Amen. I'm going to keep the goats out. I'm not to invite the Amen. wolves in. Amen. I'm going to keep the wolves out. I'm Praise not going to invite God. them in. 
please come in and molest my sheep. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. right. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's it. that's it. I mean, that's just what it is. Not not on my watch. You're gonna go. no. I'm not gonna do that. We're not gonna right. Do that. Yeah. Now, if one comes in, the person comes in. Hey, we want one kind, we're loving. That's right. That's what we do. But, uh, and we show them Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's what we do. Uh, that's what we should do. Loving his neighbor. Amen. Amen. That's right. Absolutely. So anyway, so we get back and the reports are up. And, uh, well, how many did you get saved? How many did you get saved? Oh, I got 35 saved. I got 25 saved. I got 18 saved. That's amazing. So then the, 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 uh, I beat the other missionary. Oh, this makes me cringe. But when I say that, it just sounds like, I mean, it yeah, literally is like sales. sales. I used to sell vacuum cleaners, yeah. so I understand how it works. Okay, that's, no, it's, it's, it's just the same it's thing. It sounds like you're at an Amway meeting. I'm telling you, that's what it was like. <laughs> right. so, so, I mean, tw- so, so I've got 28, and I beat this missionary. His wife looks at him and goes, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> how did he beat you? Yeah. Hmm. You keep that mentality? Wow. As if salvation is controlled by my hands and my mouth that I'm controlling it. That, it, that, I, that, that, that it's, it's me that does it. It's me that does the saving. It's me that does it. So I got 28. No, Fred, you didn't get 28. You don't know what you got. You know, we gotta, well, there's one thing that we need to quit doing. We need to quit pronouncing people saved. You're not God, friend. Quit doing it. Amen. Quit pronouncing people saved because they make a decision. You can say, hey, this person made a decision. There it is. If it's real, it's going to show in their life. Yep. Amen. There it is, brother. Amen. Because there's evidence there of it. That's right. Mm hmm. Right. You know what? I don't have to coax you or bribe you to, cut, to get you to come. If That's right. Tempted, That's right. You're on your way, friend. You're going to come. You're going to want to be a part of something. Right. Right. Why? Because I need to know what this is all about. That's I'm right. Saving yeah. from yeah. Something. Yeah. I don't fit in there anymore. Right. Right. I'm right. not comfortable there anymore. Yeah. I've got to go where I'm supposed to be. Oh, Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. So it, it ain't that way. It's this way. So hey. I, I got to get. I got to get back where I'm supposed to be. To make a long story short, that's the game that we play. Yeah. Another time I was at another. This is this is soul winning without. This is soul winning in my opinion today. What's now I don't mean from from times gone by, but today what it has turned into, it is basically preaching without repentance. That's what it is today. It's 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 not. It has nothing to do with the law. It has nothing to do with with uh, calling men to repentance. It's just just pray this prayer, receive receive Jesus, and you know your life's going to get better. God's got a plan for your life. God's got a plan for your life. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, none of those 28 people ever showed up at church. Right. The the hundred or 200 that I that I led through a sinner's prayer that I that I helped probably lead them to hell. Mm-hmm. Though they never showed up to church. Yes. Right. Now I'm not Stephen Anderson, so I'm not going to write you a 10 point uh, a 10 point paper of why my converts don't show up to church on Sunday. But. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Is that too personal for you all? No. No. I'm tired. I, I, I'm tired of the gospel. I'm tired of people preaching the gospel that doesn't change anyone. Amen. Amen. It's not the one in the scriptures, folks. Right? Amen. Yes, right. It's not the one in there. It is the one in there over in Galatians. It's another gospel. Right. Yeah. It's the other one. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> children are the same way. I used to be able to do that as well. Great salesman techniques with children. Right. That's wicked as the devil. Right. I mean, I can talk a child from doing anything like that. You yep. just pray this prayer. Yep. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. I don't know so what's it, Again, it, today is evangelism without <laughs> repentance. Today it's replaced biblical evangelism. It's replaced right. it. And that's why they hate and rail on street preachers and those that go out and lift up their voice like a trumpet and preach the word of God out there. Why? Because they're not doing it. For the most part, they're not doing it going door to door. That's not their, that's not what they do. They hand out flyers, invite them to church, or they run them through a prayer. 
quickly. But one thing I've noticed about it that is void of any movement of the Holy Ghost in any of it, in the design. I'm not saying everybody, but in the design of what most of those people do, they don't believe in the power of God to save. And that's why they have a problem with repentance and call it a work. It is a work of the Holy Ghost. It is a work. You're right. Just like faith is a work of the Holy Ghost. It is a work. You're right. It's just not mine. Friend, I couldn't change me. I know what I was. And I couldn't change me. There's no way I could have changed me. No way. Amen. That's right, brother. Amen. I went to church. And I preached you in your church. And I went out and got drunk. Mm -hmm. I know what I was. <laughs> I right. couldn't change me. I tried to change me. Right. I tried to get to work. So when you start saying, oh, that repentance, that's a work. You're right of the Holy Ghost. Because yeah, you ain't never convinced me a million years that I did it to me. You won't right. 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 believe that. Right. You'll never believe that. Because I know what I was. I know what I was doing, friend. I know what I loved. Mm -hmm. Right. It took a head-on collision course with the Holy Ghost to change me. That's what it took. And man, it was repentance and faith and everything else you could imagine all balled up into that to make me a, 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 a greasy meatball. That's what it was. I'm telling you something. That's what happened. I don't know any other gospel. I, I don't know it. I couldn't preach you something I don't know. I can't tell you. Right. I can't sit here and tell you that you don't need to repent. You just need to believe. Because you can't believe until you repent. You can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. Amen. Why? Because you, if you don't repent, what? why do you need to believe? Amen. That's right. Why do you care to believe? What? You, yeah, what do you believe in? Yeah. Well, who cares if Jesus died and buried and rose again if you never repent then? Yeah. What does it matter? You don't care. There's no sorrow in your heart. There's no work of the Holy Ghost going on there. You're not convicted over your sin. You don't need that Jesus for anything. Mm -hmm. You don't need him at all. Except for a dollar, right. baby. That's right. Mm -hmm. I need some money. I need some comfort. I need something. No, when you get Jesus, friend, it's because you're lost. Amen. And you know it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not because somebody somebody's able to be a good salesman and, and, and able to talk you into a close. Amen. 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 I do it all the time, but I, I trained men to do that when I was in, when I was in sales. I ran six different offices for a company. I trained them to do that. I knew them how to close. Mm -hmm. Amen. I knew that a, a customer could never argue mm -hmm. with the answers they give to the questions you ask. Right. See, I, I know. Okay. So these preachers need to stop sounding like Zig Ziglar. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Stop sounding like Zig Ziglar. I know the role, okay? I played it. I did it. I made a lot of money doing it. I know what it's like. It's manipulation. Yes, it is. And it's very simple to do. Yep. And they do it all the time. Yes. And it makes them feel better. Yeah. I'm glad you feel better. But you're sending people to hell. Amen. Telling men that they don't have to repent. And by the way, this argument only comes from people that have really never repented. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Because you ain't going to convince a man. You are not going to convince a man that has repented that he'll need to repent. Right. Amen. You ain't going to convince that man. You couldn't shake that out of him. I don't care how much you do. You ain't going to shake that out of him. No. You don't have to repent. What? What are you talking? What do you mean you don't have to repent? <laughs> You talking about? I don't know what I did. Yeah, you have no idea what I've done in my life. What do you mean I don't have to repent? You're nuts. <laughs> right? Yeah. You can't shake me on that. You can't. Yeah, I don't, well, you're a work salvation guy, man. I don't care what you call me. Okay, you can keep calling me whatever you want to. I do not care. Amen. Because I know what God did Amen. in me. Amen. And you ain't never going to shake it out of me. Because you can't Amen. shake it out of me. Amen. It's real. Amen. And it's a work of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you ought to look does. into it. Yeah. Right. Amen. I highly recommend it. Amen. Right. <laughs> we need to do it now. Amen. That's right. Today. Most soul winners go out and run someone through a sinner's prayer and can get hundreds of decisions, but hardly any fruit ever come from it. Why is that? Are they all just carnal Christians? Mm. You know, you've got to start somewhere. There's got to be, oh, they're just backslidden. We don't start, you don't get saved backslidden. Right. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, friend, but if somebody told you you got saved backslidden, you I'm not saying everything's going to change. You're going to be perfect. Yeah, you're going to be right. walking around like, yeah. like the Apostle Paul. No, I'm not saying that. 
Nobody's saying that. No, but I hate it. Oh, my goodness gracious, you Frank. Hate you, think there ain't no, you, you ain't going to be you ain't gonna be happy in your sin. That's no, it. there right. is. Right. Yeah, I know a little bit. Of me. I'm going to tell you something right now. You can't be happy about that. Right. That Holy Ghost is in there. You ain't going to be happy about that sin. You can't go, oh, I'm going to be happy about my I'm, I'm fine. What do you mean you're fine? fine. I had a friend give a testimony. He said that he got saved, and then he, he, he went out, and he, and he fornicated. And he, he didn't know nothing. I mean, he just got saved. And the girl even looked at him and said, well, you're a Christian. You ain't supposed to be doing this no Amen. more. Amen. And he said something inside him. Like, mm. Holy Ghost. What are you doing? Right. He never did it again, he said. That's all it took, man. He got himself into a church, got himself into the Word of God. Why? Because he knew what happened. Amen. That Holy Ghost be very way to sin. That repentance is real, friend. Paul's whole mission was repentance. Are you obeying that heavenly vision? I want to ask preachers across the country, this will go online. Are you obeying that heavenly vision? Are you calling men to repentance? Amen. Are you doing that? Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that, like, that every mouth may be stopped, yes. and Amen. all the world may become guilty before God. Amen. 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 I'm going to be. I'm going to. I'm going to preach this as clear as I can. If you've never been guilty, then you've never been saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh -oh. Right. Uh -oh. Amen. Uh -oh. Amen. Right. That's right. If you yes. have never been trounced and placed under the law, yes. you are lost. That's right. Mm -hmm. You are not saved. Amen. Why? Because every oh, mouth every. may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty yes. before God. Amen. Amen. Guilty. Yes. yes. Amen. Okay, now, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> you're convicted of a crime, and you're, you're, you're broken over, you're guilty of it. Right. What do you want more than anything? What does a guilty man want more than anything? Let me say this. Let me say it another way. Let's say you fall into a sin and you've broken your wife's heart. You've committed uh, fornication. I don't care if you're lost or even saved. It doesn't matter. But you've done something and, and you're, you're, you're truly sorry for it. What do you want more than anything? Mm -hmm. You want forgiven. You want forgiven. You want, that, you, want that, you want that person. You want to look in their eyes. You want them to say, I forgive you. That's right. That's right. Now, now what if that wife said, I mean, are, are you sorry for what you did? Are you sorry for her? You, you, she wouldn't have to ask him that, would she? If she knew it, she'd look on that man's face, and he's broken. You know? Right, right. There's Amen. nothing left of him. Yes, right. He's broken. Amen. And he looks at, and he looks up, and that, that's the way this friend, when... You're guilty under the law. Amen. And you see yourself as guilty under yes, the law. Yes, sir, bro. That's it. There ain't no question in your mind whether you have to repent. That's right. Are you right. kidding me? Yeah, right. Are you kidding me? Really? Right. There's a question in your mind whether you have to repent? No! Not a guilty man that knows he's guilty before God. He's not questioning that. Amen. The bonehead preacher might be questioning that. Amen. But he's not questioning it. Right. Oh, oh, I need forgiveness. Amen. I need to be forgiven. Yes, Oh, and what happened every time a prophet seen a vision of God? Oh, and the mean where I am undone. Yes, yeah. sir. An unclean man with unclean lips. Yes. In the midst of an unclean people. Amen. Oh, wicked God. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm under the law. I'm, I'm broke. I'm broken. That's what the law is for. Yes. So you have to ask a man that understands that he's cursed and he's guilty. You know, it's not going to be like, well, have you repented? <laughs> do you, I don't. Do you do you really think he needs to repent? You have to ask a man that that knows he's guilty Amen. and is sorry for what he's done. Yeah, sorry. Sorry <laughs> man, when I've done wrong, when I've wronged somebody, and I'm sorry, man. Oh, man, you, know, you don't have to. And I really want forgiveness. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to go through that rigmarole with me. You don't. I I'm broken. So you're going to tell me that you're going to stand before a thrice holy God and you've been placed under the law and you're condemned and all and your mouth is stopped? Yes. I'm guilty. It's me. It's not a question of whether he whether he has to repent. That's what I think is funny. Yes. It's not a question of whether he has to. It's yeah, he gets to, but why wouldn't he? No. Right. Why? Why? What do you mean? He, what do you mean you're asking whether he? he 
he has to repent. <laughs> no, he will repent. Yeah. It isn't a question whether he has to. I think it's funny. That's right. It's godly sorrow. Work is repent. It's not to be repented of. The hey, sorrow of this hey, world. Hey, Work at death. Yes, sir. Amen. That's it, brother. Amen. I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's too easy. Yep. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. You know, when you get saved, what's he saying? And people say, well, that was for another dispensation. He was, you know, we were under the law before. But no, he's saying that when you're saved, you're under the law anymore. That's right. You're not under, you're not cursed by the law. Right. It's been fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Christ met the law. Right. Amen. I don't know what you think God did away with the law. No. He fulfilled it. Fulfill it. Amen. Right. None of it. Amen. Right. We've broken all of it. Yeah. Right. James said it. You yes, won. Right. You broke it all. Hey. Right. That's right. You're guilty of it all. I thank God that I can be guilty of it all because I can be freed from it. Amen. 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 Yeah. By the one that fulfilled it. Yes. Once and for all. Hallelujah. A man will never repent until he sees his need to. But the cult of soul winning says, well, here's the Romans road, minus any sin, minus anything else. You have a heaven problem. You just need to believe. You just need to believe. Instead of showing Tommy his rightful place under the law, they run Tommy through a prayer. Repentance is surrender. Faith is to trust the finished work of Christ for forgiveness. Repentance and faith are the two aspects of man's response to God's offer to salvation. Mm -hmm. It's me seeing who I am, and it's responding to it. Yeah. It's the proper response of a man that yeah. wants to be born again. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And sees himself guilty before God. Yeah. In those days came John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. What did they do that for? They just had a belief problem. How are they confessing sins? Mm -hmm. All they had to do was just believe. They didn't confess that, didn't they? Amen. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees yeah. come to his baptism, mm -hmm. he said to them, O generation of vipers. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't very nice of him. Yes. He should talk sweeter and say nicer things. O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Who sent you here? Is this of God? Yes. Are you here from your father, the devil? Um, which one is it? Uh -huh. Are you repenting? Are you acknowledging the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world? Is that why you're here? Are you here because you've repented? What are you here for? Where are you here? What do you want? Hmm. So he says, bring forth, therefore, fruits, yeah. meat for repentance. That's right. That's right. Think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. They knew the Messiah was coming through. Mm -hmm. They knew who Abraham was. They knew who the God of Abraham was. It wasn't a problem whether they had a belief. Right. They already knew who was. They, they, knew, they, they knew it. It was preached mm -hmm. to them. They understood. They lived it. They were in the lineage of it. They right. understood it. They believed in God. Right. We have Abraham our father. For I say unto you that God is able these stones to raise up children of Abraham. And now also the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. From that time, I'm just going to read some Bible verse. We're going to be done here. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance. John the Baptist, Jesus Christ. Amen. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Not because they believed not? Right. Why didn't he say because they believed not? Mm -hmm. 
Well, because unless you repent, you can't believe. Amen. You've got no reason to believe. Mm-hmm. No reason at all. What's your reason to believe? Why would you come to Christ? Yes. Yeah. Well, for what? What are you coming? That's why he asked him. That's why he asked him. What are you here for? Over and over again, Jesus said the same thing. Why? Repent. Suppose you that these Galileans were sinners of all the Galileans because they suffer such things? I tell, I tell you, nay, but except you believe? No. Mm-hmm. But except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. That's right. That's right. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell, and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Right. right. And they went out and preached that men should repent. Yes. Oh, boy. They do that for. Uh, amen. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. How about some examples of repentance here? Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. You've got a sin problem, friend. Right. That's the problem. Sin. It's mm-hmm. always been the problem. Right. Amen. I think it's Amen. kind of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Right. It wasn't a belief problem. Adam knew who God was. Right. Right. Can I help you out with that? Let's start at the beginning here. Because that's why we're all born into sin. Amen. Amen. Let's start with Adam, okay? So Adam, Adam went and he ate, he ate the ate of the tree, right? Yeah. Right. After his wife gave it to him. Um, that's not a, I'm not being mean to women or anything like this. That's how it happened. Anyway, <laughs> he accepted it, man. He accepted it. What's that? He accepted it, right? It was his sin. Right. He accepted it. That's he right. It. Did he? Have, did he have a? Did he have a belief problem? Did he not believe God was there? Did he not believe God was real? Did he not believe God was his father? Well, he was kind of formed with God's hands, and God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and God was the only one he ever knew. Right. Right. And he walked with God, so he knew who he was. He didn't right. have any problem with belief. What do you have a problem with? Sin. Right. right. Amen. Sin. Right. He turned his back on God. He sinned. Sure did. Right. He sinned. Did Adam still not believe that he was God? No, Adam knew he was God. That's why he was hiding naked in the woods from him. Right. Yeah. I'm naked. What did God say? Where art thou, Adam? Where art thou? Uh huh. You know, that's a lesson, too, for you that God was looking for you a lot longer before you were ever looking for him. Amen. So God true, comes a looking for you when he preaches that word of God. What's that? God looking for you. Mm-hmm. I know. You thought all you had to do was just say a prayer real quick and it was all over. Somebody just ran you through. No. God's looking for you through the word of God. That's how he speaks. Through Amen. the word. Amen. And he convicts the heart through the Holy Ghost and the word of God. And he's looking for you. Mm-hmm. Amen. You weren't looking for God before he was looking That's right. for you. That's right. God's always looked for man first. He went after Adam. Why? Adam's a sinner. I've got to go help him. Amen. Amen. That's he right. Adam, he can't do Adam, you didn't believe. No. Adam was a sinner. Yeah, right. He sinned. Hast thou eaten of the tree? Yeah. Give him a chance. Uh, he man. gave him a chance to what? Confess to repent. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Mm-hmm. Called him on his sin. Yes. Yep. There was no problem with belief there. He understood who God was. Mm-hmm. That's right. Working out. That's right. So so goes it on down through the thousands of years. Man's still a sinner. Man's still in need of a savior. Man's still going to hell for his unbelief. Yes. Yes, but unbelief is sin. Right. It's all sin. Mm-hmm. Why is that hard for people to understand? It shouldn't be. I gotta move on here. The last verse here. Mm-hmm. Actually, two more. Sorry. Repent you therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. I read that one anyway. Luke chapter nineteen, verse number one. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, yeah. and half my goods I give to the poor. Yeah. If I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Yeah. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is the son of Abraham, for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Zacchaeus' repentance was a change of mind that resulted in a dramatic change of life. That's right. What didn't end there? Didn't end just well. You know, I, I need Jesus. Amen. <laughs> 
repentance was a change of mind that led to a change of action. Dramatic, radical. Why? Because God's spirit worked on him. That's why. Convicted. God's work. He knew what he was. Right. You won't have an argument with somebody, friend, in evangelism or anything else when you're preaching the gospel to people. You won't have an argument with a guilty man whether he needs to repent or not. That's right. The only people that argue with you on repentance are those that don't think they're guilty. Amen. And what do they need? The law. People that think they're innocent will argue whether they have to repent. Did you hear that? Yes. Remember that. People Amen. that believe they're innocent will argue repentance. People that know they're guilty will have no argument. No right. They know they're guilty, and there's nothing to argue about. Amen. That's how it works. Amen. That's how it's always works. That's how it's always works. And they, if they can't receive repentance, then they need more of the law. <laughs> they need the law preached to them. Don't hand somebody Jesus who doesn't think they're guilty. Why would you do that? Why would you hand an innocent man, uh, a, a man that thinks he's innocent, to Jesus Christ to cleanse him when he doesn't think he's dirty? Right. It means nothing to them. They trample it like this. Yeah. Right. Right. Bunch of hogs and dogs. Right. That's yep. what they'll do is trample it. No. They need the law. They need to be stopped. That's right. Yeah. And then there will be this silly argument whether repentance is necessary. In any age, in any dispensation, yeah. in any yeah. book of the Bible. Yeah. And by the way, I I'm done. I know. I said I'd be done, so I'm done. i got to get out of here, man. <laughs> this other brother's got to preach here. He's he preaches like an hour and a half, I think, too, so i got to get moving. But, uh... uh <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. But, but there's an argument also on the, on the book of John. Oh, we yeah, use John yeah, for, the, for evangelism. Yeah. Absolutely we do. We use the book of John. I can use the book of John to show repentance. Right. right. John chapter 3 shows repentance. Uh, uh -huh. Read the whole chapter, not just 16. Yeah, yeah. amen. <laughs> Read the whole chapter, how men love darkness rather than right, light. right, and they won't come to light. Why? Their deeds are evil. Amen, brother. Their deeds are evil. That's why they won't come to the light. They know the light's there. You mean it's not belief? No, it's their deeds. Yeah. They're evil. Yeah. Their mm -hmm. works are evil. Right. Only repentant man can believe. <laughs> That's right. And Jesus said, "You must be born again. You're in darkness." Right. You're in darkness. The Apostle Paul came along and said, You can be turned from darkness to light. Mm -hmm. The power of Satan unto God, that they might receive forgiveness of sins. Amen. Repent you, therefore, and be converted. Yes. Father, thank you so much for your Amen. word. Amen. Lord, thank you for the patience of your people Amen. here today, Lord. And I certainly didn't want to take advantage of them at all either, Lord. And I pray you just bless what we've done here and bless the message to follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. Can you look at it again? Yeah.